Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, walk you through the steps of hand tracing a program. Now there's a very detailed explanation of this in the textbook, but it's, uh, it's sometimes hard to follow it in a uh, static format like textbook. So let's, um, let's just do this one line at a time. And you'll see actually, although it looks really complicated in the book, it's, uh, it's really not that bad. So um, let's start by recognizing that every C program, C++ program starts in main and then just starts executing uh, from there uh, sequentially unless there's some reason not to do it sequentially like an if statement or a loop or something. We haven't covered loops but those would be some uh, conditions where uh, it wouldn't continue to go sequentially but so the first line of the program is just going to be the first thing that executes and what this does is going to take um, a space in memory that is the size of an integer so we just put like this here and put time to boil and we're going to give it an initial value of minus one in fact here let's do it this way there we go so that's, uh, that's what happens on when the first line executes, and that's the end of that. Let's go look at the next line. So this one is going to create a space for an integer. It's called temperature, and doesn't have an initial value. I'm putting question marks here, but it doesn't have the value of question marks either. It just has whatever happens to be sitting in memory at the time. And that's, um, you know, so you cannot rely on whatever that value is. And when you're doing this, uh, you also want to have an area to show your output. So here's the output. And so the next line that executes after this one will be, oops, this line right here. And this will go out to the screen. And so now notice there's no end L, so it's not going to go on to the next line. And that's the end of that executed line, right? So now we're going to do this line, which is going to read from input. So it's someplace in here we're going to have to show uh, the input. And uh, let's see, the input value that it tells us in the book is, hold on a second, um, 230. Okay, so the input value here is 230. So when this executes, this will take that 230 and put it into temperature right here. And then you go on to the next line, which is this one. It's going to see out the temperature. All right, so, and there was a space in here at the end. You can see this space here, right? 230 and an end L, which means it will continue right here when it's ready to go. Now, there won't be that little, that arrow there. It's just, I'm putting it there to show you that's where the next output would go. Well, the next statement says, if temperature is greater than or equal to 212. Well, all we have to do is look at it, and we notice it is 230, so this is true. And so this block of code will execute or fire. What's the first line of that? Well, right here is to see out how long to boil. So this will go out onto the screen. Notice it's still sitting uh, there because there's no uh, end L yet. And the next line is to read in time to boil. And uh, let's see, time to boil. Uh, let's see, in the uh, example, okay, is five. Let's see. Let me just make sure I don't want to mess you up. Yep, 5. Okay, so the other next input here was 5. Okay, so it reads time to boil 
uh, and puts a 5 in there. And then it will see out, the next line is to see out time to boil, which has a value 5, and a carriage return, or endl, and so there it is on the next line. All right, now, if, so, that's that. That's the end of this if block right here. Now, the next statement that's going to execute is this one. It says, if time to boil is not equal to minus 1. Well, time to boil is 5. So time to boil is not equal to minus 1. So that means this block of code will execute or fire. And the first line it will execute is this one right here. And it says, it will take. So this goes right here. It will take. And then see out time to boil, which will be 5. And then these words here, minutes to boil on the next line. And you notice there's no end L there. So uh, perhaps there should be, but there isn't in the uh, example that I pulled from the book. So. Uh, so that's where it will end right there because if you look here there's nothing left in that block and the only other thing is this return zero which just uh, exits the program and so um, if you look let me see if I can pull this up at this um, part from the textbook then we just executed that step by step on here showing, um, you know, so that we could see what the output would be based on what the inputs were. So that's all there was to that. And then uh, on the second version is tracing them when they do not fire, right? So the inputs we're going to have here are, um, I think, uh, 100. So let's, uh, let's fix this up. This will be 100. And then let's put everything back to uh, back to the initial values. No output yet. All right, we'll start over. So time to boil is minus one. I've already set that. Okay. Then the uh, oops. Next line here is to create temperature with no initial values, and so there we have that. All right, and what is the temperature? So that's just going to go out onto the output. And I'll put that arrow back there so we can see where we left off. The next line reads the temperature from input, which is 100. So I'm going to put that in here. And then this displays the temperature and moves to the next line. All right, now it says if temperature is greater than or equal to 212. Well, the temperature is only 100, so none of this will execute. All right, so none of that will execute, so it goes on to the next line outside of that block of code, which is why we have these braces or curly brackets here. So it's going to go to this line right here, and it's going to say if time to boil is not equal to minus 1. Well, it is minus 1, so not equal to minus 1 is false. That means it will not execute any of these lines. And that's the. And then it just gets the return, and that's it. So the output for this is just, what is temperature? 100. And then nothing else ever happens. So it's very important to know how to hand trace your programs, because when you have a bug in them, and you will, you need to be able to sit down and look at it carefully and say, well, what should be coming out of here? And, uh, and if that's not coming out, why not? And if you hand execute your programs like this, you will be able to find out where the uh, errors are.